Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another System Design in Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you how to implement deadlines and timeouts in gRPC. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. What I want to show you first is a few changes that I made uh, related to the generation when we are using Buff. That's the tool that I practically use for working with gRPC. I added two extra plugins using the new directive called Plugin to refer to the plugin that we're going to be using for generating both the protocol buffer and the gRPC services. In this case, this is a nice way to not have anything locally installed, but rather let Buff do the work for you. So typically what you have to do next after you make the change, you run Buff Generate. In this case, I already generated those files. If I go and look at Gen, you will notice that now user has a new user service, service services PB which is the protocol buffer, is the implementation of our server. Now, what I want to show you is, because we're talking about deadlines and timeouts, what those refer to exactly. Deadlines and timeout are language specific and depend on the API that you're using. For example, some languages use timeouts, which indicate the duration of time, and some other languages define a deadline, which is a fixed point in time. In Go, if you recall, when using the context package, we can use it either way. I will show you those two different ways to do it using two different programming languages. First one, let's talk about the timeout. First, we're going to be running our server. So in order to do that, we're going to go to examples, server, and just run it as usual. What includes the server? So in order to add a timeout, what I did was to define a new time slip, just the simplest way to implement it, which is under right here. So every time we request this RPC, the RPCs on the server side will be sleeping for three times. Now, if we look at the implementation of the client, which is under deadline timeout, you will see that we have deadline and timeout. Let's look at timeout first, which is implemented using Ruby. In this case, the way the API for Ruby is implemented is using a timeout variable. It doesn't define a way to specify a concrete deadline. So because I define timeout as three, and we are going to be, or rather we're, we're, the server is taking three seconds to complete, and the client is saying, hey, two seconds, I'm gone. So if we run that, so when you go to examples, deadline timeout, we do bundle exec Ruby main RB. And what is going to happen is that we, we okay, we are receiving what we are supposed to be receiving, but then on the client side, it's timing out. Again, if we go back, we got to stop the server and we change the implementation to only sleep one second, this is going to be working. So let's stop the server, run it again and run the client one more time. You will see that it's requesting and everything works as expected. So this is the cool thing about uh, timeouts in this case. And again, depends on the uh, implementation of the program language as well as the API that you happen to be using. Now let's look at the deadline. Now in this case, we're going to be using Go. For the deadline, things are a little bit more Go related. So if we open up the file in the deadline folder, you will notice that we have the typical configuration for uh, connecting to a server. The only thing that we did was adding the width deadline uh, line that is using the width deadline API in the context package to indicate that specifically I want to use this deadline that happened to be two seconds from now. Now the server is still three seconds and two seconds on the client side. So if we run again the server and we go back to our deadline and we go run the client, you will notice that we receive a request as usual, but this one is going to be failing because now we were expecting it to be completed in two seconds. And again, if we go back and change the deadline to, for example, five seconds, so we increase it and we run again the client, you will expect that to be complete as usual because there is no deadline that happened to be executed before what we indicated in the client connection. And that's it. This is how you implement deadlines and timeouts in gRPC. It seems to be really simple and easy to use, but remember this is a security concern you should always define clients timeouts and server timeouts when working with any type of connection, either HTTP or gRPC. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Stay safe. See you.